This is an absolute classic of the snake horror genre. The film caused a huge sensation upon its release in the deepest part of the Amazon rainforest. There is this ancient and mysterious tribe. They worshipped a python and even regard the python as their patron saint. The director Stephen was very interested in it. He wants to make a documentary about this tribe's customs so as to bring them back to the eyes of modern civilization. So he decided to lead a film crew of seven people on a boat to the deepest part of the Amazon rainforest to explore this legendary and mysterious tribe. But little did they know what the journey would cost them. On a stormy morning, they saw a small boat that had run aground. A man on board was asking for help. Without hesitation, Stephen commanded Ikeolite to lean towards him. They were able to rescue Paul. Paul learned during the conversation that they were looking for this mysterious tribe in order to repay them for saving his life. Paul volunteered to take them there. The people were suspicious of this fierce Paul. They did not accept Paul's kind offer. They continued their journey towards their destination. However, the boat had an accident on the way. The rope got tangled in the propeller, so Stephen had to risk going into the water to cut the rope, but Paul's mouth was curved in a strange way. He seemed to be quietly concocting some huge plot. Sure enough, a few moments later, Stephen was struggling violently in the water. The crowd rushed to rescue him. By the time they got Stephen out of the water, Stephen was already dying. They found a highly poisonous wasp in Stephen's mouth. When everyone was at their wit's end, Paul took a knife and made a slit in Stephen's neck. Paul then inserted a tube into Stephen's neck, allowing him to breathe again. Although Stephen was out of danger for now, but Paul suggested that they take him to the hospital for treatment. Paul knew the location of the hospital nearby and could take them there. So the group changed course at Paul's suggestion. However, they were falling into Paul's traps step by step. Before long, they were blocked by a fence. Paul calmly pulled the bundles of detonators out of his bag. Terry rushed to stop Paul. She thought there must be a reason why the fence was blocking the river. But Paul said he could get everyone through the channel in 10 minutes. There was no other way out of this situation. When everything was ready, with a loud bang, the fence was also blown to pieces. But the next second, countless scared snakes fell from the trees. The crowd was shocked by the snakes. Paul, however, was very excited and grabbed the snakes. After cleaning the snakes from the deck, they realized that there was only one bucket of fuel left. The fuel had fallen into the river at some point. Paul said that this barrel of fuel was more than enough for the trip. They could wait until they returned to the ship to figure out what to do. Paul just drove the Ikeolite into the restricted area. They didn't know how long it took. Paul suddenly signaled the boat to stop because he saw an abandoned ship not far away. Paul guessed that there might be fuel on board, so he took Mateo and Danny and walked quietly over to it. However, Paul knew the way here very well. It didn't take long. Paul found a mysterious box in the ship. He and Danny carried the chest back to the Ikeolite ship together. When he left, he reminded Mateo to go back quickly. However, just as Mateo was going back, but he slipped and fell into the river. When he got up, a python suddenly appeared in the water and quickly attacked him and wrapped around him. Meanwhile, Danny, who was back on the boat, found that Mateo was not following him. So he decided to go back to look for Mateo. But he searched for a long time, but he didn't find Mateo. In the end, he only found Mateo's flashlight. While everyone was wondering what was going on, Paul threw a roll of the python skin in front of the group. Paul said that Mateo had been eaten by the python, and this skin is the best proof. However, Terry didn't believe Paul's words. She thinks Mateo is just lost, so they should wait for Mateo to return before leaving. Paul says he's more than happy to wait. In the evening, Paul finds Gary. He tries to convince Gary to go with him to capture the python alive. Gary is tempted by the money and agrees to go get the python. The next morning Gary tries to bring everyone along to join the team, but he was strongly opposed by everyone. No one wanted to mess with this fierce beast. Paul saw that this gentle persuasion did not work and shot them. The crowd was thus suppressed by Gary's weapons and had to compromise. By this time Paul had already set up the fishing platform. Now all they had to do was wait for the python to take the bait. Soon there was a sudden reaction in the water. Then the rope shook violently. Paul was overjoyed at the sight. He hurriedly retrieved the rope with great force. A 20 meter to long python appeared in front of everyone's eyes a minute later. Everyone was on their feet in shock. This was a sight they had never seen before. Gary hurriedly grabbed a bright light to shine on the python. Under the light, the python struggled more and more fiercely. Finally Paul was hit by the swinging tail of the python and knocked to the ground. The python also took the opportunity to break free from the hook. Then it sank into the water and disappeared. The python suddenly emerged from the water and screamed. The enraged python locked on the target and quickly attacked Terry. In the nick of time, Paul shot at the python with a tranquilizer gun. After being shot, the python fell to the ground in pain and his tail wet wildly. 
Denise was accidentally thrown into the water by it. Gary saw the situation and rushed into the water to save his girlfriend. But at that moment, the python also turned its head. In the nick of time, Gary was able to save Denise. However, just as he was getting to shore, he was attacked by the python that suddenly appeared in the water. Terry saw the situation and rushed to pick up the gun on the ground. But she was stopped by Paul because Paul wanted to catch the python alive. The boa constrictor just wrapped around Gary and sank into the water. The death of her boyfriend made Denise very sad, but then Paul came and pretended to mourn for Gary. Denise kept cursing Paul, but Paul kept on smiling. Late at night, Terry puts on her makeup. She planned to use the badger game to kill Paul, so she went straight to Paul's room. She lied that she had been in love with Paul for a long time. Paul believed it, just as Paul's guard is down. Danny sneaked in, but he was detected by Paul, but Paul didn't realize there was real danger behind him. Danny suggested throwing Paul into the water to feed the python. But Terry took pity on him, so they just tied Paul up. Terry found a newspaper on Paul's person that published his story. She then learned that Paul was a professional snake catcher. He'd set Stephen up with poisonous bees and changed course. He even went to the abandoned ship to get his equipment. All of this was just to carry out his plan to catch the python. Although Paul's plot was uncovered, he contemptuously admitted that he did it all. After all that had happened to them, they didn't feel like exploring the tribe. So they decided to turn around and head back. However, on the way back, the Ikeli accidentally ran aground. The three had no choice but to risk going down the river to save the boat. Meanwhile, Denise on the boat was walking slowly towards Paul with a knife. She wants to avenge her boyfriend's death, but Paul suddenly jumped up and knocked her down and wrapped his legs tightly around Denise's neck. Denise struggled for a while and then lost her breath. Paul did all this and then calmly kicked Denise into the river. He also managed to get the knife. And the three busy in the water still do not know what happened on the boat. Danny just then suddenly saw, not far from the water grasses shaking violently. He was alarmed and immediately called everyone back to the boat. And at the moment the python also revealed the surface of the water. At the moment of life and death, Warren attracted the python's attention in time. But he also became the target of the python's attack. Warren tried his best to swim to the shore. He hurriedly climbed to the rock again. But the python was still after him. Finally, Warren had no way to escape. He jumped down from the waterfall to the mountain in desperation. We can't imagine what happened to him. Just as the python strangles Warren to death, the tree was overwhelmed and then collapsed. Several people on the boat were forced to jump into the water to escape. But just as Danny tried to climb into the boat, the python that was following him attacked Danny. It tightly strangled Danny. At this moment of life and death, Terry grabbed the 98 KS on the ground and pulled the trigger on the python without hesitation. Terry thus succeeded in killing the python, but then Paul suddenly appeared. He knocked Terry to the ground. He then grabbed the 98 KS again. He was furious that the python had been killed. He turned his gun on Danny. Just in the nick of time, Stephen woke up from his coma and gave him a shot of anesthetic. The drug quickly took effect. He felt a little dizzy. Danny went over and elbowed him directly and sent him to the river. However, Unbeknownst to them, the anesthetic fell off Paul's body immediately. M-I-C-A-L-A-I continued to return to the river soon after they come across an abandoned warehouse. Terry guessed that there might be fuel inside the warehouse, so she and Danny cautiously walked towards the warehouse. It didn't take long for them to find the fuel, but before they have time to rejoice, Paul suddenly appeared and knocked them out. When they woke up from the coma, they found that they were tied up and couldn't move. And that's when Paul throws a bucket of foul-smelling liquid at them. Saying it's monkey blood, Terry keeps cursing him, but that didn't solve the problem. And so, with everything in place, Paul hid and waited for the python to take the bait. In a few moments, the two men stood up in a panic. They seemed to have seen something that scared them both, and python several dousing meters long slowly crawled towards them. Paul saw that the time was right. He descended from upstairs and quickly closed the net. Paul thus trapped the python in the net. The python struggled violently in the net. However, it didn't take long. The net could not bear the weight and broke a large mouth. Paul saw the bad situation and rushed to escape. But he still underestimated the resentment of the python towards him. The python opened its bloody mouth and sent Paul into its mouth. Meanwhile, the two of them broke free while the python was eating. They tried to sneak out when it wasn't looking. However, the python noticed their movements. The python still wouldn't let them go when they were full. The python continued to chase Terry. Terry was forced into a pipe with no way to escape. She had no choice but to climb up the stairs. At that moment, the python also came after her. In the nick of time, Danny took a chisel and chiseled down on the python's tail. 
Then Danny saw the fuel left on the ground and came up with a solution. He poured all the fuel in the barrel on the ground. Then after Terry crawled out of the smoke, he quickly lit the fuse. He rushed out and told Terry to jump into the river. As an explosion sounded, the smoke tube was also reduced to ashes. The python wailed in pain and fell into the water. It struggled a few times and then sank into the water and did not move. But before Terry could catch her breath, the not quite dead python suddenly emerged from the water again. Luckily, Danny was still a strong fighter. He took his axe and slashed at it. Now the python should be completely dead. Right. 